Namaskar. My name is Christopher Tompkins. I'm a lifelong yoga practitioner and Sanskrit scholar with advanced degrees in Sanskrit and in Indian religions with a particular focus on the yoga tradition and its evolution. I've had the great good fortune over the past 10 years or so to be able to share the great wisdom teachings of the tantric tradition with many thousands of people around the globe, as well as the history and evolution of the yoga tradition as we've come to understand it. I'm so excited to launch this campaign to fund the first of a two-volume series, the first publication to demonstrate the ancient roots and evolution of Surya Namaskara as a yoga practice. This is based on nine years of intense research that I've undertaken into hundreds of source texts, most of which are unpublished, and almost all of which come from the medieval tantric tradition. By contributing to this campaign and sharing it, you'll be joining me at the groundbreaking grassroots level as we rediscover and reveal to the world the ancient heritage of modern vinyasa-based yoga. And so volume one will be the first book to ever present the roots and evolution of Surya Namaskara and vinyasa-based yoga through passages that I've discovered in over 100 source texts. I provided on this page an overview of my findings on the evolution of namaskara-based postural yoga in the Namaskara Timeline video, which begins to fill in the previously undocumented legacy of yoga passages that is found within the awkward thousand year gap that appears in most historical timelines of the yoga tradition's evolution. In March of 2012, I founded the Tantric Manuscript Acquisition Project, or TMAP, in order to retrieve as many sacred manuscripts from Kashmir before they were lost forever. Thanks to a successful fundraising campaign and the support of many donors, I was able to return with over 25,000 scanned pages of unpublished manuscripts. Among these were the texts used for the daily worship of Goddess Bala, associated with a tree shrine in the forest of Kashmir. Goddess Bala, whose name means young woman, and who personifies the Shakti or power of that dawn Sandhya. I discovered that these Bala texts prescribed a daily yoga practice, which included a 12 posture sequence led by the solar seed mantras, Hrang, Hring, Hrung, etc. It is this practice which has come down to us as the so-called classic Surya Namaskara series of 12 poses. I have since found in hundreds of texts that this same classic sequence existed and was practiced over many centuries all throughout the Indian subcontinent. And then in June of 2016, on the second annual International Day of Yoga, led by the United Nations, Indian Prime Minister Modi and other officials proudly revealed the commemorative Surya Namaskara stamp series, featuring what is now known today as the same 12-part classical form of the practice. Yet in recent years, scholarship that's reached the mainstream yoga world has increasingly denied that Surya Namaskara and the vinyasa style of yoga celebrated on the International Day of Yoga has ancient roots at all, claiming instead that it was fabricated by T. Krishnamacharya in the early 20th century from Western gymnastics, bodybuilding, and wrestling, concluding that Surya Namaskara is not an ancient practice at all, but a, more of a modern innovation or invention. On the other hand, for both International Days of Yoga, the vinyasa-based style of postural yoga practiced by millions worldwide today has been officially praised as the, quote, ancient heritage of India by the United Nations itself. And the fact is that more people practice Surya Namaskara on the day of the summer solstice 2016 than any other day in human history. So on the one hand, we have modern Western academia claiming that Surya Namaskara is not an ancient practice. On the other hand, we have the United Nations, the country of India, and millions of yoga practitioners claiming that it is indeed, Surya Namaskara is indeed, an ancient practice of Hatha Yoga along with Asana Vinyasa, a claim made eight decades ago by T. Krishnamacharya, who asserted he was merely reviving a practice from the yoga scriptures in danger of being lost. Only one of these claims may be true. Both cannot be correct. And for the first time, my books will provide overwhelming evidence that Surya Namaskara and Vinyasa-based yoga was indeed a core part of ancient Hatha Yoga, as originally conceived in the medieval tantric tradition. The first goal of this book will be to demonstrate that Surya Namaskara is indeed an ancient practice of yoga. We'll look at passages that specifically reveal the place and evolution of Namaskara Vinyasa as one of the preliminary rites called Upasana or Upachara of daily Hatha Yoga practice required of most Tantric initiates beginning around the 12th century and continuing in through the 19th. Section B will be the heart of the book, a detailed study of the three daily Namaskara Yoga sequences taught in all Tantras and universally prescribed beginning with texts 
dated to about 1000 AD, forward all the way down to the modern period. My revelation of each of these three namaskaras will be based on passages from dozens of medieval tantric works, representing at least six tantric lineages. This includes namaskara practice number one, engaged at the juncture of dawn, known today as classic Surya namaskara, this sequence of 12 poses, was known commonly in the ancient texts as the Dandavat Namaskara Kriya, or the ritual act of offering reverence through a series of bending poses, or duns. This represents the standard 12-part classic sequence of poses, the same depicted in the commemorative stamp series presented on International Yoga Day 2016. I'll be presenting passages drawn from over 50 Sanskrit texts which teach the sequence, representing the months of the solar year, and led by the solar seed mantras, Hrang, Hring, Hrung, etc., this is the core namaskar practice of Hatha Yoga, which has come down to us through Krishnamacharya and the Bihar school. Number two, engaged at the juncture of noon, 16 poses following the syllables of a Vedic or Tantric verse. This sequence traditionally acquired physical effort, additional physical effort to perform. And it's here that we see the first innovation of warrior poses. The 16 poses are based on the syllables of a verse of devotional poetry chosen from either the Vedas or the Tantras. This sequence is comparable to the Sun Salutation Series B, as taught by Patabi Joyce of the Ashtanga Yoga System, who claimed, indeed, to have based that series on Vedic verses. Finally, the third Namaskara, practiced at the juncture of dusk, known today as Chandra Namaskara, the devotional offering of the moon, was perhaps the most sacred of movement meditations taught in the Tantras, lost to us until now. So up to 64 possible postures comprise this dynamic spontaneous movement, also called the chakra vinyasa, or the sequence of poses that imitate the chakras, starting with muladhara, swadhisthana, manipura, and anahata. This empowering practice was taught as a garland or a mala of flowing body mudras and included many subsequences of poses which survive to this day. A uniquely compassion-based practice, this evening namaskara was meant to heal and protect others. In section C of the book called Niyamasana, we'll study the tantric renovation of the eight limbs of the Yoga Sutra, turned into an embodied practice. I'll show that by the 10th century, the Vishnu or Vaishnava Tantras, especially those listed by Krishnamacharya as his sources for his Yoga Vinyasa revival, listed in the preface of his book, the Yoga Makaranda, had renovated and incorporated Patanjali's eight limbs or Ashtanga system of yoga into a fully embodied sadhana or practice, one which now embraced dynamic movement as a central part of daily yoga, and one which these tantras began to call Hatha Yoga. I will show how an additional niyama or observance was added to Patanjali's five niyamas, called pujana, a rubric meaning worship, but a reference to the practice of Surya Namaskara. And I'll show how non-seated asana sequencing gradually became so integrated with Namaskara practice that the phrase Niyamasana was born and would eventually become central to the yoga of all tantric lineages by the 14th century, as volume two of my book series will detail. Section D, primary Sanskrit sources on Surya Namaskara and asana-based vinyasa in forming this book. We'll be focusing on three general lineages that cover a span of over a thousand years of the evolution of movement-based yoga, including the Virashaiva or Lingavat tantric lineage of Maharashtra and Karnataka. The Virashaivas or warriors of Shiva were a radically life-affirming lineage of householder yogis that promoted women as practitioners. We'll be studying a core group of six Virashaiva tantras, including the Amshu, Ajitta, Sukshma, Kamika, and Karna tantras, and taking a look very deeply at the namaskara practices of these tantras through the great Virashaiva author Nilakanta in his Kriyasara, the first to really contextualize Surya Namaskara as a daily yoga practice. And a video of this particular passage from the Kriyasara can be found on this Indiegogo page, the first ever that proves the 12-part namaskara commemorated in the stamp series was an original yogic practice. We'll also be studying the core Tantras of the Pancharatra, the great Vaishnava lineage of T. Krishnamacharya, focusing on a dozen or so namaskara-based vinyasa practices, including those which are listed in Krishnamacharya's sources, such as the Sattvata Samhita, Naradiya Samhita, and the Ahir Budni Samhita. We'll learn how these particular tantras began to integrate many vinyasa subroutines which have come down to us to the present day. Finally, we'll be studying the Kala Tantras of Kashmir and East India, 
a tradition that spans over 1,100 years of Namaskar evolution. I'll present the development of poses in the Namaskar sequences in these Kala Tantras, from a core set of Dunda poses, as we saw in the Virashaiva text, into innovative warrior-based sadhanas. We'll learn how the martial aspect of Namaskar sequencing was actually a compassion-based practice in these Kala Tantras, whose purpose was to destroy ignorance and suffering in oneself, and then bestow blessing and protection upon others. Finally, Volume 1 will provide a comprehensive index of sources, including over six dozen previously unpublished Surya Namaskara passages presented as part of a pan-tantric daily yoga practice spanning 1,000 years of the Indian yoga tradition. Where your money will go. 55000 is the minimum amount needed to see Volume 1 through to completion by October 2017. It will help provide me with a basic stipend for the next 12 months to sustain the considerable work needed to translate and contextualize dozens of crucial Sanskrit passages. Part of these donations will also support the publishing process itself, with funds going towards editing, towards hiring an artist to illustrate a considerable number of sequences. And also, your kind donation will go towards formatting, design, and marketing expenses. All funds received above the requested amount will go towards publication of Volume 2. In exchange for your crucial support, my collaborators and I have put together a range of very exciting perks, including the evolutionary Prana Vinyasa Yoga Teacher Training with Shiva Ray, a seven-day experience offered at several wonderful locations around the globe. Mythic Flow Yoga and the Dark Goddess, a four-part download with Siana Sherman, a dive into the heart of the goddess with four mythic stories told and taught by Siana. Additionally, I'll be offering for your pledge my Yoga Vidi Introduction Download, an exciting session that reveals how Surya Namaskar, once a core daily practice of Tantra Hatha Yoga, was covered up in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika. It also includes the first Surya Namaskar sequence ever revealed from a source text, that of the 14th century sage Nilakanta. A video excerpt of this particular teaching may be found on this Indiegogo page. Another wonderful perk is the origins of Surya Namaskar, taught by Shiva Ray and myself, a groundbreaking six-part course download revealing the forgotten role of Surya Namaskara in daily tantric yoga practice. Finally, the asanas of Krishnamacharya. For your pledge, you can be among the first to discover the antiquity of three asana sequences that I've discovered from Krishnamacharya's overlooked list of source tantras, including Meyer asana sequence, shoulder stand, or Sarvangasana sequence, and headstand sequence, Shirshasana. Thank you for your time and attention. Please join me at this groundbreaking grassroots level to discover the ancient roots of Surya Namaskara and Vinyasa-based yoga. From centuries of source texts that have been overlooked, we will discover the roots of our own yoga heritage. Namaskara and Namaste.